We'll take just a minute to talk about flight zones on the individual animal and point of balance and where you need to be relative to changing an animal's direction and basically changing their mind about they, what they want to do. Uh, this whole process is very simple and takes very little movement, but you, you can do it on an individual basis or on a herd basis and have the same general result. As you approach a cow and as you go toward her, there's a point that she's going to start moving away from you or moving. As she moves, and she doesn't want me to get any closer proximity, I can build speed by getting closer to her as it goes around that pen. But if I want to stop her, I back away from her, and she stops. So my proximity to that cow affects how she responds. Now, if you want to drive a cow or pull a sick animal out of a pen or whatever, it's important to know where their point of balance is, where you can change their direction and change how they actually respond to you. I'll take just a minute to kind of work this cow around and see if I can affect her movement. Now she's a little distracted by where the camera's located, so it'll take a minute to get her attention back on me. As I walk toward her hip, I should draw her head to me as I back away. I can keep her position in that where I want it. Now then, I have the ability to either move her to the left or the right. The way she's positioned with her right front foot back, she's wanting to go that way. So as you're looking at a cow, it's easy to change her direction by how you position her front feet before you make that first approach. So her natural inclination was to turn that way, so if I wanted her to go the other way, I would have had to reposition myself over far enough around here to get the cow to move. Now I should be able to draw her attention to me. If I step forward, she should go that direction. Once again, she was set up to do that. Her feet were ready. You can change that point of balance. If cows are coming at you down facing you and you want them to go past you, you move toward them. As you move toward cattle, it speeds them up and they'll come past you. It'll be a little difficult to demonstrate that on this cow, but in this particular pen, but the thing that I want to demonstrate on this cow is you can actually change direction by pushing her. I can pull her around to the left. I can stop her by stepping away from her, go back to her. If I want her to pull her this way once again, I can just step a little further. I want to push her away from it. Her point of balance, I'm a little out of position, so I've got to come back this way, turn her head away from me, get her to go away, and then I can turn her whatever direction I want to. Once again, drive on her hip, back away from her until she stops. And once again, I can draw her head to me and turn her this way. Or if I change my position, I can turn her toward that fence. It takes only a little bit of difference. Then I get, get over here and we'll turn her around. She's listening to the dog right now. Turn her back this other way. Takes very little movement on that cow part to get it done, but I've got to get in the right position to get her to move. I approach her, just, I hit that point, she'll respond, and I'm in her flight zone, and her point of balance changes, and she'll move away from me. Uh, you yep. can do that in a group of cattle, as we just showed a while ago on that other set of cows, bringing the whole group at one time. Going to pull cattle out of a sick pen, you have to be able to, to control their movement by your body position prior to trying to drive them out of that pen. And if you'll do that, it gets very easy to pull sick cattle or to gather cattle or anything else. The principles are the same whether you're in the pen or out in the pasture. But you can really get some predictable things done with the cattle by how they respond to you. And you can draw their attention to you. I want her to go this way, so I've got to step across her point of balance, step back into her. She's a little distracted at the moment. Once again, I could have made her move, but let her get through with her business. And once again, put pressure on her head. Just gonna turn around one little step at a time. Right, if she doesn't want to go that way, I've got to reposition myself. A lot of times cattle do not want to turn to the side where they've got an ear tag. 
because it blocks their vision and they're more easily turned away from an ear tag. There she finally, now I've got to push her far enough that she'll change vision. Now see as I back toward her, she's still looking at me out this eye. I can draw her attention, her head turns slightly. And then I can push on this hip and turn her this direction. Each cow has a different flight zone, as we mentioned. This cow I can get within a foot or two of her before she responds to me which actually makes it more difficult to do a lot of things we're talking about because it gets you out of position and you have to back up quicker and faster than you would on a cow that responds as you walk toward her. See, as I walk toward this cow, she doesn't even pay me any attention until I'm within about two feet of her. If you have some cattle that are calm and some that are a little flighty, putting the, the two together does help to some extent. You can do some of that by the way you handle that individual animal. A lot of times we'll put a wild animal in a pen, what we call wild, and just leave them. If we'll actually spend a little bit of time settling that animal and getting them quiet and still on their feet before we leave them, it'll reduce their stress. Because movement builds movement, even if it's an individual or a herd. And so if that animal is stressed and you put it in a pen and it's just constantly bouncing off the walls, if you'll take a little bit of time to slow it down, calm it down, before you leave, it'll normally stay that way. If not, then you may try to mix those calmer cattle with them to where they have somebody, some companion, uh, to help them settle down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick one particular cow out of here and bring her out. This is 're sorting that cow out of the other pen I used those other cows turning it looked like I wasn't really doing anything but I was turning those cows that were in front of this particular cow behind her and using them to push her out of that herd as she came down that other fence that's not a very good fence over there so if I put pressure on her to try to sort her off from that one that was following in the calf I could have very well tore the fence down. It's important to be stay calm and quiet when you're handling these cattle to make sure that they stay calm and respond to you. If they get frightened, they don't pay attention to the things we want them to pay attention to, and that's us. And they'll start trying to jump fences and get away from you. So as we got her into this alleyway, I wanted her to come back into this little pen. There's no way I could do that if I walked around behind that cow. I couldn't control her movement and her direction. So my objective when I went into the alleyway was to draw her attention to me and then back away from her and draw her to me and I would be in position to turn her in this gate. This particular cow will have a different flight zone than the last one we dealt with. In fact, she hasn't been still since we put her in this pen. If my proximity to her right now is causing her to move. The gray cow a while ago, I had to get within two feet of her before she ever moved. Now this cow's calmed down a little bit, which I like to have one of them do that before I start trying to work with them. And if she doesn't calm down on her own, you need to take the time to do that on yourself and get her to where she'll stand still. And it may take a little bit of time to do that, but it's important from a stress reduction standpoint. Now I'm gonna, I can stop this cow by very little movement. And I'm just working across the pen from her where I was having to work next to the gray cat. Well, let me, I can move her movement from 15 feet away. I can change her direction. As I back away from her, she stops. I move just a little bit. She's very attentive to where I'm at and what my motion is going to be. And I want her to turn away from me. I can take one small step and she'll do it. I can step this way and I should be able to stop her. Stop her. Right now, she's not wanting to turn the other way. She doesn't want to take her, eye, her left eye off of me when she turns around. So my next objective is to get her where she doesn't mind doing that. Get her 
water down here where we can actually work with her a little more. Get her calm down a little bit. Once again, this is, this is what makes working a set of cows very different than working individuals. Because if she's in that herd, she's a little calmer and a little easier to predict. But just my slightest movement gets this cow to, to move and react to my body position. I'm going to get her up here and see if I can draw her attention to me and back away. Step this side. Get it done. Step away. She's so attentive, I'm going to draw her attention to me a little bit. Step around this way. I want her to turn toward me. And go back this other direction. Now, all I've got to do is cross in front of her point of balance, and she's already turning to go away from me. So the point of balance on cattle varies greatly. There's a midline point on the cattle, on the cow, where she'll either go forward or go backwards. The same goes if you're looking at her face, for, you know, into her face. If you step to one direction or another, it will change that point of balance and her reaction to you, primarily because of the way the eye structure on the cow is. She can see you out of one eye better than she can the other because of the position on her head. So as I step toward this cow, her attention is immediately drawn toward me. Now, if I wanted to turn her away from me, I'd have to change that point of balance. And all I did was step in, put pressure on her shoulder, even though very slight, and she turned away from me. To stop one of them, I backed up past her point of balance. And this midline on this cow, and it stops. You back away from them and toward her front, it'll slow them down. Now, if I step toward this cow, I'll probably draw her attention to me a little bit. As soon as that ear, you can watch cattle's ear. As soon as her ear moved, I knew she was about to react to me. So I needed to back away, and I did exactly what I wanted to. I drew her attention to me. I'm going to see if I can turn her away from me. Now I put more pressure on her, and she didn't respond well. So she's not quite ready to do what I was trying to do to get her to push away from me. I need to spend a little more time working with this cow. As I back away, I can stop and turn her. She's there. She's, want, she's not wanting to turn away from me once again to the right. I'm going to practice that a little bit. To get one to turn away from you, they have to lose contact with you with an eye. And they don't like doing that. It puts them in a, a, what you might call a point of peril where they can't tell what you're going to do. So if I can get her to start, I'm going to get out of that and back up to where she can see me out of that other eye as quick as possible. That way she stays calm. I'm going to move forward and try to turn her back the other way. And right now this cow is responding very nicely to what I do. If I were to approach her right now with her head when it was looking at me, she would have probably went forward. If she looks away from me, I have the chance then to move forward and push her away from me once again to pull back and stop her. Once we do that, we have control over the front end of that cow. We can make her do what we want to do. And as they get stressed, you want to back off of them and relieve that pressure. Like I said, pressure depends on their flight zone, point of balance, and what you're actually wanting them to do. Get them in the sort pen, you want them calm and quiet. And if they're not, you need to take a little bit of time to calm them down and quiet them out. I'm gonna go in here now and sort out a specific cow and talk about how to use their position and to push the other cow out of that group where I can get the, the one sort that I really want. As we as you work cattle, a lot of people like to have something in their hand, and personally I like to carry a sorting stick but it's not necessary, it's more of a crutch than anything for me. If you have a stick or a whip or a rattle paddle or whatever in your hand, your, your tendency is to use it. And if you're relying on it, a lot of times you're out of position. And so you use it as an aid to drive cattle rather than use your position to move those cattle. And anytime you have to go to strike a cow or use that driving aid, it alters your position and your response to that cow. So it's best if you learn these techniques without them. And then if you want to carry a stick or a sorting paddle or whatever with you, that's fine. 
as you get older you may lose a step and it may allow you to get that position where you need to be with that paddle rather than your body and if you've got cattle that you don't want to get close enough proximity to I don't mind rattle paddling as long as the rattles out of them so I drill a hole in them and take the BBs out of them before I start using them that racket is distracting and disturbs and stressful to the cattle if you want probably the best sorting aid I've ever seen is just a regular old broom it's quiet but it's visible and you can actually shake it and it'll make movement. So if you want to have a sorting tool with you, a little old broom, four foot handle is a very good sorting tool. But right now I'm gonna leave these cows in this corner, circle them around to push the tan cow out and sort her out of this pen. So right now my objective is to take the red cows, move them forward. And as they do, they'll push the tan cow out. Had I jumped in the middle of that, I might have caused a bigger wreck than I could stop. So your best thing, if your sort doesn't work like you predicted it to, to back off, start over. It's less stressful on you and less stressful on the cat. Back off a little bit more. See how they're all turning the same direction I like for them to turn. Step into this hole and I've got my cow sorted off. She comes around me and out the gate. Now if we want to sort one more off of this set, we can do a similar, very same thing. As we said earlier, we could take them to the front of the pen. I'll try to sort the white tag cow out of this group. I need to back up and slow them down. Now then as that other cow looks away, draw this cow's attention to me. Step into the hole and you've got your sort done. Now that was a little quicker than I'd really like for it to be. I should probably push the cattle back and start it over and got them in a better position. One thing we normally think about as we work cattle is the more we work them the more stress they get. If you look at these cattle in the pens right now they're calmer than they've been all day. And if you handle them correctly in low stress the more you handle them the calmer they get. In a lot of production systems nowadays, that's not the approach they take or the result they get. So we need to focus a little more on handling cattle properly. We can get by with less inputs, less dollar inputs on facilities, and we have better health, immunity, and performance out of our cattle. Once again, I'm going to go this side rather than in that alleyway and around. I want to move just enough to get them started, and then I'll back off and let them move on their own. Once you put cattle in a pen, it's best to go make sure that they stay calm. If they calm down right away, then you're done. If not, you probably need to go spend a little time with them. 